Many times we are well. Yeah, I think he could be aggressive or he could be that or she could be this or that or the other. But no, probably not with me. So we idealize a situation that we know pretty well should be able to happen at any time. And that's sad. That's very sad. Well, I had a uh, little bad time with my back. I had a lumumba, or what it's called, a uh, lumbago. Uh, it's more or less the same shit. And uh, couldn't do anything, I could hardly come here. So that's why I haven't been in contact with you guys. I didn't talk on the uh, Facebook or anywhere else. So, yes, da. not much more. No. SSDD, same shit, different day, <laughs> as we say. So today's uh, conversation is an interesting one. It's going to be about how the nice guys and nice girls in the beginning can seem very friendly and uh. seem like an ideal partner. Mm. But then there's a trend. A lot of people say this. Then they go, oh, they were so nice in the beginning, and look what's happened. They're angry, they're possessive, they're jealous. Yeah. What, what's going on? The first thing is something you should know about. Uh, you're working with it all the time. It's called marketing. So I look at a nice girl and I think, wow, I want her. So what do I do? Being my normal me, like a nasty old shit or whatever, or am I going to be a nice guy who tells the girl that life can be so beautiful as long as you're together with me. Hallelujah. And when the girl buys it, which they normally do, because they're longing after partners just like the guys are longing after them. Well, then you have a nice time. You go home together, make love together, are together for a while and when we get almost a guarantee that she or he won't run away again that's when we start getting back to normal and normality in this case very often stinks because you're not so polite anymore you're not so considerate you're not so loving, not so caring, and that goes for both. But very often it's the guy who scares the woman, because uh, many guys want to be on top of the woman, not only in bed, but on top in all situations. They want to be the controller. And when the woman does not react to becoming to being controlled, then the guys very often start getting threat threatening. I've had cases like that all the time, all the years I've been working. I've been looking, I've been listening to it, I've been even hearing the discussions. If you don't, yeah, then, oh, you're going to see, you're going to see what I'm going to do. And all those threats, many times my reaction has been far away from professional. When I've seen a guy react to the, like that to a girl, I would tell him, look here, you touch her, I touch you, and that will hurt. Uh, I, I didn't mean it like that. Then shut the fuck up. If you don't have anything to say, don't say it. Huh? Women. You know, very often you are false, very false, and that is a pity, because I know so many beautiful, lovely women, uh, and when they 
uh, loan or loan some or something and would love to have a guy and to see some kind of a night, nice guy there, then very often they come and uh, play the game. And the game goes on until the guy almost is dead and uh, until they find another one. I don't see that as fun and I don't see it as uh, doing the right thing. I mean either you make up your mind and you say this guy would be fun for a short time and tell him look here I don't know if I can, uh, can, can, can love you or I just feel you're nice, you're attractive, you're sexy or whatever and let's try it a little bit. That's honest. Uh, so people, we've established that people are marketing themselves in the beginning. So you don't always normally get what you have in the beginning. How can you detect that early on in a person? Is there a way? If you're horny, or if you are longing for somebody, if you just long for a partner, don't show it because if I'm this partner who just is lonely a time and would like to have somebody for a short time uh, then I will not tell you look here you're good for a short time then afterwards I'm gonna kick your butt don't tell it don't show it go out together have fun together as much as you are willing to give. Okay. And then afterwards, when it's over, end it as a nice friendship. Because you can actually do that many, many times. And find out if the other one actually is so interested in you as you think. But what we want, we, we are so much longing Longing for somebody who says, I love this guy or I love this girl. Uh, and uh, we both are longing to hear it from the partner. I love you so much. Uh, and then the eventually threat, yeah. I want to marry you. Yeah, uh, it was a joke. <laughs> no, but, but it, it is, we, we, we want so much to hear all those things because we want that somebody belongs to us and that we belong to somebody and if we don't have that whew, life's a hell and that is when we start idealizing we idealize relationships we say okay he or she doesn't feel like that right now but uh, uh, he hasn't said the opposite so maybe it's going to be much better. And then I've seen her uh, casting this smile at me. She looked so loving and caring. Even if it is a wasn't. Uh, or he. He just was so caring and loving. So it is the right thing. And we get ourselves into this feeling uh, of... Yeah, it must be the right thing, or otherwise it wouldn't have happened this way. Yeah? Do, do people in that state of idealizing the relationship, do they tend to ignore the negatives and push them aside? Yeah. yeah. 900, uh, 999 times out of a thousand. And is this a subconscious thing, or is it a mental effort they're putting on to ignore? Many, many times we are quite aware of it. Many times we are aware of, yeah, I think he could be aggressive or he could be that or she could be this or that or the other but no probably not with me uh, so we idealize a situation that we know pretty well should be able to happen at any time and that's sad that's very sad eh? it's it's one of the things for instance you have alcoholics hmm? The alcoholic gets thrown out of his home. He uh, looks at you and finds you on a party. Uh, you look beautiful. You look uh, uh, as somebody he would love to have. And uh, he looks at you at the same time and sees she wouldn't like me to be an alcoholic. And when she looks at my glass, and when she looks at my eyes, 
and then asks me, do you drink a lot? I know exactly, that's the last thing I should admit to. So I say, no, I did it once a long time ago, but I stopped that. I stopped that a long time ago, so uh, not anymore. She doesn't believe it, but when he doesn't drink anything but water, Coca-Cola or anything, okay, she gets the proof she wants. And there is another thing also that she wants, and that is, he has the, an alcoholic for instance, has very often a high sensitivity. So she feels that sensitivity is something very positive. She doesn't identify it with something her partner had before. If the, the woman or the man is an alcoholic, they will not show it. They will not tell everybody, uh, I'm, uh, 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 I'm an alcoholic. Can you see that? He's not an alcoholic, but he's a little bit too round. Okay. Uh, so, it is when, when, when you start getting to know each other a little bit more, then you can see all the edges, you can see all the good stuff that an alcoholic has. Not only the bad one. And then, after a while, you maybe become a couple. And then it won't take too long before the real person comes out again. And when this real person comes out, it's often too late to stop. Because then you're hooked, she's hooked or he's hooked. It's very difficult. What is it about toxic relationships like that? that make it so difficult to get out of? Is it the big drama and the roller coaster that they've gone through that makes them...? No, it's, it's, it's also this uh, feeling of shifting between fantastic good and fantastic bad. Uh, that uh, uh, even so, the partner knows about it from the ex-partner, how they're shifting, it's still always a surprise in a way uh, that the other one can be so good at showing what he is not, or she is not. Yeah? So that's it. And then when they are so good, then you fall in love. And when you're so bad, when they're so bad, then you again have this feeling of, yeah, but he's not as bad, or she's not as bad as the other one. Yeah? And uh, she's promised me to stop it. Or oh, he has promised me to stop it. Uh, and even so, the other partner before has done exactly the same. They still try to believe in it again. And is that the, the alcoholic thing? That normally happens in men or do women act the same way? Same way. Very nice at first and become mm. a bit of a monster towards the yeah. But a woman alcoholic, uh, you can easier uh, recognize. Uh, it's more difficult for, for a woman to... Uh, uh, pretend. It's much easier to get over from sober to drunk and, and uh, seeing the eyes and seeing the mouth and seeing the movements and everything. A man can more pretend. He's a better liar or when it comes to those things. Pity. Pity? Yeah. Mm. Pity for the poor woman. Yeah. So oh. what advice would you give to someone then who is either sure or has a feeling that they're in one of these toxic relationships? Stop it immediately. Run away. Get away from it as uh, long as you still can. Because it's only getting worse. Remember the ex-partner and all the promises and all the lies and everything. And believe me, this one is going to be exactly the same.